Ladies and gents, behind me is a brand new Telaria MX-5 still in the box. And in this box is a package from Torque. And we're gonna be unboxing a brand new MX-5, assembling it, then immediately installing a Torque TC-1000 controller kit just to show you how capable this bike really is. Oh, there's no But yeah, really loving the way this feels. This bike out of the box comes with 13 kilowatts. This box alone will add the power of a brand new Suron Lightby to this bike on top. So you're basically gaining a whole extra bike for just around a thousand euros. So now let's get this bike unboxed and I'll show you how to assemble it and how to put the torque on. So yeah guys, as you can see, this bike is box fresh. I'm gonna get it assembled, we're gonna skip forward a bit, and then once it's assembled, I'm gonna show you how to install the top, and we're gonna take it out for a rip. A few moments later. Okay guys, and like that, a Telaria MX-5 is born. Now this bike is completely standard at the minute, box fresh, just assembled it, got it all together, the battery's on charge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rip that standard controller off, I'm gonna take you through the steps of how to do it, and then we're gonna take it out, I'm gonna show you exactly how fast this bike is with the new controller. Okay, so when you get your torque kit for the MX-5, you get your face plate and included hardware, you get your wiring harness and accessories, you get your main loom, and you get your TC-1000 unit itself. So I'm gonna unbox this. You do get given some instructions, so you can always read these, but, I'm gonna take you through it on the video, step by step, and yeah, I just think that'll be much easier for most people, so let's go on with it. Okay guys, so this is something new for the MX-5. This is a fuse. The actual MX-5 wiring harness doesn't include or have a breaker, so for your safety, they've included this. This is a, a fuse, basically, and it goes between the positive on the controller and the uh, positive cable that goes to the battery. So first things first, we're gonna remove the horn cover because your wires are tucked up here. Once you've got the horn cover off, set that aside. Do not lose the three screws because we're gonna be reinstalling that after. Now we're gonna wanna undo the screws holding in the controller. You may have to drop your bash guard. I can normally wiggle it out once you've removed the horn cover, but let's see. Same on the other side. So first thing I'm gonna do is unclip both the connections go into the controller from the top. That's one, and that's two. A bit snug, that one. This will allow me to pull the controller out. Now, if you have a look here on the back of the controller, you've got your three phase wires and your positive and negative. We wanna remove these and get these out of the way. So these are actually super tight, but once you've cracked it loose, come out nice and easy. Make sure you Keep these screws in case you want to install the controller again in future. The torque controller does come with new screws though. Once you've removed the phase wires, it should make it much easier for you to go ahead and take off the positive and negative as they are now free to move. And just like that, the original MX-5 controller is now off the bike. So these do have some aftermarket value, so it's best that you keep this and sell it. That way you can offset some of the cost of your new Torp controller. Hey guys, and before I forget, if you do want to purchase a Torp controller for your Ultra B, MX-5, MX-4, Suron Light B, any bike, use code STINGY15, that'll get you 15% off at checkout. I'm pretty sure that's the highest discount Torp I've ever offered, and it should help you out a bunch. The next step, install the Torp wiring loom. Super simple, there's only two plugs here and they are colored. They go to the two that we removed on the top already. If you want to use your regen lever, you have to remove the original one because that will not work with the top controller. And this is the slot where that goes. But seeing as I'm not going to be using it, I don't really like using regen. I'm going to leave that plugged in and bunged up. So yeah, let's plug this in. I'll show you how simple it is in one take. Black cable goes into the black socket white cable into the white socket. That's it, we're ready to go. This end goes into your new torque controller. I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but you wanna put the dielectric grease that's included in between the male and the female on the top of the controller. Now that we've got those plugged in, we wanna install the controller. To do that, you're gonna to have to remove the OEM brackets that mount the controller to the bike, and then we can fasten in the replacement ones. Okay, so now that we've got the two brackets installed, we're ready to install the new torque controller. 
This can be a little bit confusing. I'm going to show you what order to put this on so that you can get this cover over the way it should go. Firstly, you want to take your fuse and connect that to your red positive terminal on the bike. So this red one here is your positive. You want to take the fuse, use the included hardware, and you're basically just going to extend the line by putting the fuse in with the nut and bolt. Now that this is in and on, you want to take your cover and you want to slide it over like so, so that the new hardware is protected and the new end is exposed. If you look inside the controller, you'll see all of these pins. What you want to do is take the dielectric grease included in the pack, squirt it all inside there to fill this up, making sure the water can't corrode these tiny little pins. Then we're good to go. Once we squeeze this in, it will spread out and evenly distribute. And then we're going to hear a nice satisfying click when we install this. There we go, that was the click, that's in, all secure. Now it's time to screw the controller in place and then connect the wires up. Now that we've got the controller installed, we want to connect the phase wires at the bottom and the positive and negative here, so I'm going to get that done, but they are labelled, so you've got blue, green, yellow, and they go to corresponding B, G and Y. So guys, once you've connected all your phase wires up, all you've got to do is put the cover on and then put the horn cover back on. As you can see, I've got it all completed. It looks absolutely amazing. It looks so clean and sleek. I really like the design of this. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead, install the app, calibrate it, set it up, and then we'll take it out for a ride. Okay guys, so I've got 72 volt battery uh, selected. I've got battery current maxed out, motor current maxed out, and we should be pulling around 18.1 kilowatts. Right guys, I'm now at a private road. We're gonna be doing a top speed test. I'm gonna be doing a wheelie test, see how it wheelies and how controllable it is. And I'm also just gonna be judging it because I've ridden a lot of standard MX-5s. They produce 13 kilowatts peak in hyper mode, but the continuous feels a little bit lower. Um, and yeah, they top out about 58 miles per hour on the GPS, which is about 62 on the display. So we'll see if we can beat that. Bike. It is so fast. It's doing 58 mile an hour just coming down there, and it's nowhere near like maxing out. And also, look, it just breaks loose traction so easily. All right, guys. So we're starting off in sport mode. I've set it up to max power. Oh, it's just wheel spinning. Oh, there's no traction. Whoa! Whoa! This thing is stupid fast. Okay, this thing is really, really fast and it's just just breaking loose on that standard rear tyre. You really want a 1916 wheel set for this. We're already at 52, 55. Oh my god, this thing is so fast. Guys, bear in mind, this is set up using the torque configuration. So the speed is more accurate than it is on the standard bike. 56, 58, oh my god, it's so fast. Oh my god. You do not need any more power than this. It's actually, the torque is the, the most shocking part. It's the torque, yeah. We're gonna hit a top speed run down here. And roll into it around 35 mile an hour or so. Okay, ready boys? Speed bump. 57, 60, 62, 63, I saw that. I think 63 is the best. But this is GPS speed, this is not, you know, Tolari always give you about seven to 10% more on the speedo than you're actually getting. Definitely need some better traction. Oh my god, this thing is a really fun stuff. 56 on hill, 59, 60, 61. Oh. So yeah, I really do think this is an awesome package. Like, you've got the Tolara MX-5, which already comes with so many useful upgrades over the competitors. You've got the gearbox, so it's nice and quiet. You've got the really good forks, the big brakes, 
you've got really nice levers that are reach adjustable you've got a chain guide you've got a massive great big chain the lovely pegs peg bracket and then you couple it with this torque controller and this surely has to be an e-ride killer the only thing that is down a little bit on is range because the battery is not the biggest capacity but if you throw something like an 82 volt 50 on this which a few of our customers here at wgt racing do this thing is the ultimate all-rounder does need a better set of wheels though these wheels are not the one they are so the back's too high and that is too um too slippery but yeah really loving the way this feels let's try it in eco okay eco oh yeah so immediately off the bat sport the throttle response is much 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 more aggressive oh there's someone behind let's go over here So Eco is lovely and smooth as you would expect and then you switch it into Sport and it's just breaking traction. Oh, I'm as you can see it's super super wet so I can't and that's why I'm not hitting the trails today because it's literally like a bog. It looks clear but under the leaves you sink straight away. Let's give it another run up the hill. than I expected it to be. Oh, another car. Let's see if I'm going to get eight. Oh. Okay. Right. Final verdict on the top off initial impressions. I will do a longer trail when the weather gets better, but initially, yeah, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I don't think you can go wrong. All of the controllers now are so good, but the torque works with the standard display, which I love. It keeps all your standard features. You can even put a new regen throttle on it if you wanted. It comes with one in the box. Yeah, I'm really, really impressed with this as a package. It's so powerful. You can pull the wheel up, like, probably at like 40 mile an hour on this. Hang on, let's go on at 30. Yeah, it comes up with ease. I reckon you can initiate a wheelie at 40 if you're into that sort of stuff. Also, really handy with the Torp, it shows you all of your BMS data, so it does actually communicate with the BMS inside this battery. You can see all of your cell data, your um, yeah, your cell charge differences for voltage difference in the cells. Um, yeah, really cool bit of kit. I'm really, really impressed with this. And if you're new to the Torp app and you haven't seen it or used it before, You've got a drag race mode, like basically just the timer. You've got a lap tracker, log viewer, map. It's, it's, it's like everything you could want. But yeah, guys, let's head back inside. I'm going to give you my final, ver uh, final verdict on this controller. Okay, guys, so after that ride, I'm covered in mud. But wow, I'm really, really impressed with this. My final verdict is that you should definitely consider this as an upgrade if you do have one of these bikes and you're after a bit more power. I will say it's not the cheapest, but if you use code STINGY15, you do get 15% off at the top checkout. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. It works on all bikes, Ultra B, Talaria, Sir on Light, B, E-Ride. But yeah, guys, really, really happy and impressed with this. It's peaking way over the 18 kilowatts that they claimed. Um, and yeah, the top speed is upwards of 63 mile an hour, which I saw on the Speedo. Remember that's GPS. So if this was on the standard controller, on the standard display, this would be showing something like 69 or 70, just because that reads a little bit higher. But yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And as always, my name's been Stingy, and I'll see you next week. Consider subscribing.